noticed we haven't been doing much boating stuff this summer. And that's because the boats have been getting worked on. This guy behind me, it's 2004 and the upholstery had just gone to junk. So we just had that redone. We'll show you that to you probably tomorrow. But right now I'm gonna attack the teeth. You guys have seen this in other videos. You've seen me do it. So I'm not gonna show you how to do it or anything like that. But this year I'm doing something different. I'm actually gonna clean it and then sand it a little bit because it's for me brushing it over like the last six or seven years that I've owned it, it's starting to get porous, which is good if you wanna step on it because it has grip, but it's a little too porous. It's just like soaking the oil in and it's not staying very long. I get like half a season out of it and then I've gotta retreat it with oil. But that's the last thing before this goes in the water. We gotta summarize it, which means we have to put the pipes back on it, the plugs in the block and a new battery on it. And after that, I think we're gonna launch this thing. We're shooting for this weekend. It's Thursday right now. So I've got a lot of work to do and Emily's gonna help me tomorrow. We're gonna have some fun because it is boating season. It's hot out here and it'll be nice to be on the boat and be able to jump in and cool off. Got my belt sander. I'm using that because an orbital sander on this, I'm afraid it's gonna take some of this grain out. So I wanna go in a straight line, get that grain out of it. I'll pop this latch off so we don't damage that. And then Emily suggested I put some cardboard between here. The reason I'm not taking this off, it's very easy to get off, but I don't have saw horses here at the lake house. So I'm gonna put some cardboard in between here and we'll get sanding. We just had her detailed too. Normally I do this myself, but we've just been so busy. And she is looking spiffy. Once I got it sanded, I didn't show you, but there's another process and it's teat cleaner um, by Starbright. I put that on there and then I use like a wool or a strong brush and just kind of get all the crud off because what happens is the wax builds up on this stuff and you got to get that off. Otherwise the new wax won't adhere and you'll have discoloration. The next step is this brightener. You just brush this stuff on, it says leave it for one or two minutes and then rinse it off. And then we'll be on to, once we let it dry, we'll be on to putting the oil on it and starting to make her look pretty. Okay, so I got the brightener on there and it's had about two hours to dry. So it's time to start putting some oil on it and see what she actually looks like. This is the fun part. Everything else has worked, but now it gets really fun. So that's what she's looking like after the brightener. And it looks pretty good. I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but this is what mine always looks like when I get to this point. And yes, I have a hickey there. Somebody ran into it when it was in the dock. So this is gonna take a lot of coats. And I basically just put a little bit on my paintbrush. And then I just paint it in. And that's what it looks like with one coat on it. It's looking really nice, I'm liking it. And I will typically do like five coats of that. So you can see it's kind of shiny. That's gonna settle in a little bit. A lot of that soaks in. The goal is to get it to seep into the wood a little bit. One of the things that we need to check off the list is an oil change. So I've already stuck the little hose down through the drain hole. Check it out. The little hose drops down right here out of the bottom of the boat and i'll just put my drain pan right down there and i've got a piece of carpet that i'm gonna lay on to take the little cap off and begin draining the oil okay i'm under the boat here is my drain hose super nifty the way it comes down through the bottom of the boat so i've got a couple of crescent wrenches and i'm gonna take that uh cap off and I've got my drain pan.
think we need to add trailer maintenance to the list. We've definitely never loved how the trailer doesn't match the boat, but that is pitiful. <laughs> If you're familiar with our cabin cruiser, our uh, <laughs> Bayliner 2855 Sierra boat that we bought that did so freaking well on this channel, um, we tried to take it out last year and it tried to sink on us. It took on a substantial amount of water. And so we took it to a friend of ours that um, knows boats real well. And he advised us to consider replacing the transom. He said he feels like it's rotten. He said, you can tighten it down, like tighten the bolts or the nuts or whatever. But he goes, I'm fairly certain that it's rotted. So you guys need some fiberglass work and to replace the transom. So that is a big job uh, if, if y'all have any experience doing that work comment below and tell us uh, what you think i know the boat acronym very very well um but for us projects are kind of our life so we enjoy having things to work on and earning what we have essentially we buy something and don't get to work on it it's kind of like eh, it doesn't really have that value that sentimental like connection uh, as it would if we put our effort into making it nice and making it good. So, um, yeah, we're down with the wrenching. That's a big job. So we are looking forward to it. And we also have some repowering ideas. We like the big block, but we also like other engines. Maybe slightly more torquey engines. Maybe some boost. Hmm. Anyway, tell us what you think down in the comment section. And uh, we're excited to have this one on the water. We love this little boat. Alrighty, done. All drained up. Okay, let's put this cap back on and go up top. Well, I'm in the boat. And I did well by remembering a filter wrench, but this filter wrench is not big enough. <laughs> this oil filter's bigger. I'm gonna try and tighten this big hose clamp down on top of it. And then with the screwdriver, I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm gonna hit it with a hammer. I'm gonna try and break it loose that way. I'm curious to see if it'll work. We'll see. I also grabbed this uh, little plastic paint mixing cup bucket situation. Um, it's big enough to go around the filter so that hopefully when I get it broken loose, I can not make a mess inside the bottom of the boat. I know we've got the whole like a uh, hammer a screwdriver into the unit and twist it but that makes a mess so I'm trying to avoid that we'll see it's pretty tight on there we'll see I think it might be scooching around my filter a little bit. Come on over here. So uh, it's currently triple digits out here in the great state of Texas. And my phone said I don't want to work anymore. It overheated, so I had to tell Aaron I needed his help for filming. <laughs> I could not get the oil filter to rotate with just tapping on the screwdriver on the uh, hose clamp. So Aaron brought me this customized wrench tool looking number and he's like make a handle out of it. So that's what I'm playing with now. It's weird, it kind of just wants to twist out. <laughs> I'm gonna let you take a twist on it. I re-stabbed my little wrench uh, tool situation and I'm feeling like this is going to give me some good leverage to rotate it. Oh yeah, there we go. Cool. Well, that worked to break it loose. We'll get our bucket on it, break it loose the rest of the way, and take it out. Okay, I'll just put my bucket under there because I've got it loosened up enough. I think it can start making a mess for me. 
Of course, mm -hmm. of course, but that makes a mess. I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to avoid that. Okay, got my Wix filter. Just test fitted it. It fits, so it's time to put some oil in it. Never ceases to amaze me how I can work so hard to try and not make a mess. <laughs> oh god, and yet messes find me. I welcome them, I guess. It's not full yet. It's got a lot in it. It's probably up to here. Yeah. Call it good? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, she's going in. Put them on dry for years. Yeah. We we'll put them on dry whenever they're mounted sideways, so. Oh, I forgot to oil the O-ring. Nobody likes dry o-ring. Nope. Ugh. Sweet. It's interesting, this is Marine 1540. Well, that's not what it's gonna get. <laughs> For this here oil change, we are going with Kendall's GT1 Max in a 530 weight. It's gonna be perfect viscosity for all the summertime fun we're gonna have with this boat. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words. I've manifested this reality for myself. <laughs> You guys are curious why Emily's so freaked out about making a mess in the boat? Because we spent our entire summer vacations worth of money on new upholstery. <laughs> so true. Y'all, it looks so pretty. Look at the color. Oh, fancy piping. Man. Yeah. Piping's it's, beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, the boat's 20, almost 20 years old. Well, it is 20 years old this year. It's 03? Yeah. That was 04. It's 03. And it's a great boat, but it was time to get new upholstery. The old stuff would like scratch your legs when you got on it because of the cracks. True. <laughs> but when a boat treats you good, treat it good. Yeah, we really, really like this boat. It belonged to a family member of ours and um, we bought it from them and we've had it ever since. And I think it's gonna stay in the family. Uh, all the girls in my family love to ski, and this is a classic ski boat. Slalom ski. Yep. So, Erin and I aren't really much of uh, s water sports people. We really just, we're lazy. We just want to go out and float, watch the sunset. But it's fun for other people to enjoy it. And if we can offer a boat up that um, other people create memories on, we like that. Yeah, so what happened, I used to be a big time wakeboarder, wake skater, wake surfer, all that stuff. And Emily's cousin, I don't know, it was probably 10 years ago. Yeah. One weekend out at Washita, the lake we just got back from, he broke his knee wakeboarding. And he was about 10 years older than me at that point. And uh, next year we went out and he tore up his shoulder. And I decided at that point, I was making all my money with manual labor. And I just said, man, if I get injured, Emily and I are screwed. Like we're not gonna be able to pay our bills. So I quit doing it. And I think last year I got on the wakeboard one time and enjoyed it. And I'm a big air guy. I like to get massive air, you know, equal with the tower, wake to wake, doing all that stuff. And I can't stop myself from riding that way. So last time I went out, I rode just like that. And then of course this summer I've got shoulder injuries. So I chose not to get on the boat at all. But, oh, she's throwing stuff at me. A little taste of your own medicine. But yeah, that's, that's why we pretty much just go out and listen to the radio and float in the water now. But hopefully next summer, I'll be strong enough and I'll get back at least on the wake skate because that one's not quite as violent as a wakeboard. But that's it. All filled up. 
Nice. Put five and a half quarts in. Yeah. yeah. We'll check it once we get it cranked up. I oiled the uh, the engine cover too. It oh, it really needed it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it looks so much better. Yeah. I thought that. Would you be spill nice. cord on the whole thing. Yeah, so if you don't know, that's a 335 horsepower. They call it a monsoon. It's just a 5.7 center bolt engine. And it has got the juice. We like it a lot. We do. If you like Jeeps, this one's going to be on the channel soon. It belongs to my sister, and the clutch went out. So it's been sitting here for a while. But right now, it's time to get back to the Malibu. About to pull the cover back and do a little more tinkering. She was not here when I redid this wood. You guys watched how much work it was. Bad woman. Bad woman. <laughs> well, it, it looks cured to me. <laughs> well, it's not going to get a water spot. And plus, a coffee cup doesn't condensate. I had a thought pro I did consider it when I set it down. I'm teasing. I'm about to throw those batteries up there anyways. Oh, God. Now it's going to have water spots. You sloshed my coffee out of it. Oh my gosh, this is funny. Okay. You cracked me up. So today, I fixed the gauges. I didn't film any of that because I was laying under the dash. I took the entire wiring harness apart. I Got my own meter out, I checked all the wires, and turns out there was a fuse, inline glass fuse, like way up behind the computer. Dug that down, replaced it, and now the gauges work. So that's bueno. I don't know what I have no idea what blew it. But for years we've had trouble with like you crank the boat up first thing in the summer, beginning of summer, and the gauges won't work for a little bit, you hit a bump and everything comes on. And so that fuse, that little element in it, was probably just aged out after 20 years and it was making contact some of the time. But we've decided that we want two batteries. We've always had one battery on this and we carry a jump box with us in case we're running the lights at night or the radio or something like that, we can always jump it off. We bought two batteries, a Perco switch. So we're gonna wire that up so that when we're out listening to the radio, we can put it on one battery. When we're driving, we put it on both so they both charge. And that's the next thing. Emily's gonna summarize it, which means put the hoses back on. Um, the Plugs in the side of the block, that's gotten rusty, so we're gonna tap that and maybe put some anti-seize on it or something. And then we'll be time to fire it up. And go to I the lake. Can't wait. It's a long drive to the lake. <laughs> but we'll make it there. Okay. Yeah. Look at that interior. Oh yep. my lord. Ugh. So here's what we got. One battery, two battery. These were the cheapest batteries on the shelf at O'Reilly. They were like 79 bucks a piece. Yeah, which I thought was a good deal. Yeah, they were on the little marine area. It was like a whole section for marine stuff, so. And then I got this, it's another, we've got one in there already, but this just straps it down and kind of keeps the acid off your carpet and stuff like that. And on this boat, there's actually the blower that evacuates the engine. It actually sucks fumes away from the batteries as well. So that's pretty cool. So we'll get all that in there. I gotta run some wires and stuff. I was gonna run my positives to my Perco switch. And then I thought, well, wouldn't it be better just to kill the ground? Cause that isolates one side of the battery. Then you don't have all that juice going through that switch. So we're gonna run it off the ground side. I like your brain. Yeah. Let me get up in here and watch this beam. Oh my gosh, I hit my head on that thing like six times yesterday. I think you even did an amazing job on the bottom of these seats. I mean, it looks like factory, but better. And that's saying a lot, because Malibu makes a darn nice boat. Here's our little old feller. Hey, yep. Goodbye. Here's what we're working with. I said Perco switch because that's like the most common brand. This one I actually got at Walmart, but it seems good. It, it's got real positive clicks. 
and the posts look plenty big. I'll show you what we're working with down in this little cabinet. That's where the old battery was. Obviously we need to get a vacuum in there. And here are the cables. I've already replaced the ends on these ground cables. This one will go to the battery and then we'll have a jumper that goes across on the positive. So we'll just bridge the positive side. The negative side will be switched. So we'll hook these two mains into the lead on the perco switch or the uh, comm, I guess they call it. And then this will go to one side of the perco, that will go to the other side, then we'll be able to separate these batteries. So we're always gonna have enough juice to get back home. That's what I was talking about. It's got the hose to evacuate the system with the blower. So I've got to mount another box in here. I'll figure out how to do that. Maybe Emily can get some of it. Mostly it's gonna be me laying in there just doing stuff. So we'll see. It's time to get this thing on the water though, I'm ready. Okay, here's the old box. All right. that for now. It's got a nice little cubby for it. The challenge I'm having is the floor dips down right here for that second battery. So it's also got these blocks in here. So I initially thought I could take this back block off, move it down so I've got room for two batteries. I don't really want it side by side. So just give me that other box and I'll see where I think it'll fit best. Should go something like that and then we'll jump from here to here that'll make that connection then we'll go from this battery up to the perco switch on the ground side this battery up to the perco switch and then this will be the calm wire on the perco switch we'll run it up through here or through the side so it's more hidden we should have two batteries. I was just cleaning out the glove box because I think we're going to mount this switch. Like this, I think. Maybe. But this is really dirty. <laughs> what a mess. Warning stickers. Bah. Well, you don't fill the one off that shows how many people I can carry. <laughs> right, that's kind of legal, right? Yeah, it's a legal thing. Yeah. And this boat didn't have one, I don't think. I never found it. All right, so I told you earlier that I've been working on these gauges. So I hooked that battery up just because I need a win at the moment. <laughs> I need a win. It's hot out here. I need motivation. All right, fuel's working, volt is working, oil pressure's probably working. Temp gauge, something's up with that. I gotta figure that out. So let's go through our stuff and make sure everything still works. Cause this boat's been sitting over a year. Blower sounds good. Bilge sounds good. That's a light, indicates it's working. I'm not up there so I can't see it. Another light, I can see them come on. They're on down in the battery mm -hmm. compartment. Mm -hmm. The other lights, again, we can't see them. Horn. Let's see if the starter still works. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God, he cranked it with no water. Oh my, god, oh, my god. oh no! Everybody comment. It's the devil. You should at least go get an exhaust sound before the impeller completely explodes. Are you gonna crank it again? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh lord. Okay, we're ready. Flappers. <laughs> Those flappers back there are funny. Yeah. Cool. That gives me all the motivation I need to get that perco switch in, get all this secured, get her back together and hit the lake. That cleaned up pretty good. Still a little bit of residue in the bottom, but that's okay. We're going to fill it with junk anyway. 
Got our sweet little Shangri-La sticker. That's the place we love to go camping every year. Oh, so cool. Okay, babe. Sweet. Uh-oh. What? You know, I gotta climb back under there. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it, but. Let's melt switch first. Okay. So, I'm off to be down. Hey, I think that's where we want it. Sure hurts me to put holes in this boat, but you gotta do what you gotta do. This is rare to see these days. <laughs> Aaron just asked for these battery cables and uh, made in the USA. That's pretty freaking awesome. Here you go, babe. Thank you. So what we're looking at is these two wires were hitting this nut, which means the switch wouldn't work. It would just be on all the time. So what we did is we put a couple washers between it to space it up. And then I took a hand file and I reshaped these so they go around it. So we have no clearance issues. Before I put this on, I'll put black tape over this part and this part. And we should have no issues. Even if these do make contact here, it doesn't do anything except bypass the switch. So you're not going to have a short out or anything like that. It's just going to make it grounded all the time. So, but you can see there's this little piece of plastic in between here. Because what they want you to do is go out each side with a wire but that would look really junky up in there. So I wanted everything coming out of the bottom. So now we've got to cut this hole on the bottom under there and start feeding wires up through it, get it hooked up and then get it bolted back on. Which is off and there's no juice. So let's go battery one. There's fuel pump. Gauges. That's off. Let's go battery two. That's one and two over to two. Okay. Juice. One and two. Yeah. says it's indicating almost 13 and those are good hot batteries nice so let's turn it back to off and do the rest of our work that lid fits on really good that new one this one has a strap to it or the back side of those Cables are coming off. It doesn't fit perfect, uh, but hmm. it's on there pretty good. It just looks really nice. Still got to deal with those cables and get yeah. them tucked up in there nicely, but... I'm going to get some zip ties and some hold downs for them. I love it. Nice. Okay. Sweet. Let's get the engine ready. Yeah, let's do it. Next thing. This is a knock sensor out of this side of the engine. You can see it's in really bad shape, and the block is the same way. Um, because these don't run coolant in them, they tend to get rusty like that, especially if you let them sit with water in it, obviously, without pulling these plugs out. So I bought a tap. I'm just going to clean up those threads on both sides, and then Emily can throw the plugs in it, put the hoses back on, and that's it. Go get our life jackets, our anchor, our tie-downs, all that stuff, and we can launch this thing and go out for a ride. I'm really ready for that. It's quite steamy outside. We're excited for boat time. We miss the big boat a lot, but we love this little Malibu. Good stuff. 
couple hoses I can put on. Wait, where's my hose clamp? There it is. Oh, it's got a split in it. I don't think it goes low enough to matter. Carrying is all down in these cubbies. Yep. Well, it's good to be a scrawny guy. Okay. These are tight. Two down. <laughs> and those threads cleaned out? Yep. Going pretty easy. Good. So you don't need any lube or anything for that? No, it's good. I'm just knocking the rust off. We've got this new knock sensor put in there and it'll be good for another 20 years. One more on the other side of that manifold. And then I think that's all the hoses. Okay. That knock sensor looks pretty. Mm -hmm. It's all plugged in. Nice. Does that mean it's lake ready? I mean, put the plug in it. <laughs> yep. Need to do that for sure. But yeah, it's really seeming like it. Sweet. We've loaded up. We think we have everything we need in the boat. And we have the dog. He has his life jacket and everything. We're going on the lake. This is a little local ramp to us. The water's down a lot. We don't know if it's gonna work, so we're gonna give it a shot. Thankfully it's sand, not mud. <laughs> he wanted to straighten it up and uh, he was trying to go forward and uh, she was sinking but he's going back further so okay oh my heavens he's trying once more <laughs> it's exciting well we went pretty far down into the lake there but the boat never floated nope. so it never got deep enough just too gradual of a uh, decline there so time for a new ramp try somewhere else how long do we gotta stay me if I'm gonna make
this stainless steel cup mod. Got rid of the plastic ones. Aaron got these on Amazon. Amazon for 25 bucks for a box of four. No more plastic ones. Stainless. Sweet. I keep on running, no, I shouldn't want it. I keep on falling right until you're done. I can't get you off my mind. So sweet, yeah, I need it from you. Got my hands all on you, sweet. Everything I want is sugar like yes, please. Love is like candy. I both grew up on this lake and we love it. It's really special that the house that my grandparents owned for 40 years <laughs> is right through there, right off that shoreline, right back there. And that's the one we're staying in while our house gets worked on. That's right. It's a special house. It's pretty cool. First time out in a year and a month, I guess it was. I, I saw a picture on Instagram. We took it out June last year. Looking at the gauges, everything's working. We're in 16 feet of water, 13 volts, full of gas. I know that because I just filled it up. The water temp came back to life and that's accurate. We actually, we don't have thermostat in it right now, so it's running low and we've got good old pressure. And if we rev it up, Sounds amazing. Everything's working. Don't be afraid of a 20 year old boat. It still does the job. Sounds really good. I think it's running just perfect. turn very hard you get a bubble around the rock. On this boat you can do it full lock in a broad line. Much better for swimming. Finley approves. Coming in. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Is that shark fin life jacket? That's the cutest thing you've ever seen. You're so cute. <laughs> you climbing onto me? Okay. Oh. Was a success. Not a super long boating adventure, but at least we have one that runs and operates well. The big boat is another story, but I'm looking forward to reading the comments of you guys and your, you know, break out another thousand acronyms. And um, if anybody's done transom work, that's what has to happen on our cabin cruiser. So next up on another episode, I guess. Thank y'all so much for watching and we love you guys so much. We'll see you on the next episode.